Hello, my name is Yuri Gorby. I'm a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, and I have a joint appointment in biology here at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. It really is my pleasure to talk to you today about the emerging field of electromicrobiology. This refers to the ability of microorganisms to transfer electrons outside their body. We believe that this is a, an emerging field with implications that go far beyond just microbiology, but they have implications for engineering, nanoelectronics, novel materials, something that we are just very excited about having here at Rensselaer. My background is in environmental microbiology. I'm a microbial physiologist. Most of the work that I've done in the past has been associated with the uh, organisms known as dissimilatory metal-reducing bacteria. These are organisms that can use things like iron oxides or manganese oxides as electron acceptors. They can actually breathe these metals. As a um, a postdoctoral fellow with the National Research Council, I had the ability to study not only the metal-reducing bacteria that could use iron as, as an electron acceptor, but my colleagues and I at the U.S. Geological Survey discovered that these organisms could also use things like uranium as electron acceptor. In this image, you can see these metal-reducing bacteria and what they can do actually with things like iron oxide. The tube on the left, the red suspension that you see there, that's iron oxide or rust. In the absence of bacteria, these, that rust will persist in, and stay in that system forever. But if you add a little bit of bacteria and the appropriate electron donor, in this case we added acetate as the electron donor, those organisms could enzymatically extract the electrons from acetate, transfer those electrons to the iron oxide, these solid phase particles, re remove those electrons from the system, and then the iron is transformed into this black iron oxide that you see here, magnetite. During my time with the U.S. Geological Survey in the early 1990s, I had the ability also to demonstrate that these organisms could use other metals as electron acceptors, like uranium. And in this image, what you see on the left-hand side is a yellow solution of oxidized uranium. And when you add bacteria and electron donor to those to that suspension or that solution, those bacteria then could use that uranium as an electron acceptor, convert it into this black mineral phase called uraninite that precipitates out of solution. This had some profound implications for possibly using these organisms to remediate contaminated groundwaters, especially those associated with the uh, U.S. Department of Energy National Labs uh, across the United States. And in fact, I worked uh, 16 years with the U.S. Department of Energy at the lab at Hanford, Washington, and there I had the ability to investigate how these organisms actually move electrons from the electron donor to these metals as an electron acceptor. The image that you see here, this, scan, this uh, transmission electron micrograph that you see here, shows that when these metal-reducing bacteria are transforming that iron, that red iron oxide into black little magnetite particles that the, the magnetite accumulates along little filaments that extend from the surface of these microorganisms. Now when you have these filaments coated with these black particles, you can't really interrogate those filaments very well. We wanted to know, okay, what are these little, um, those little filaments that we're seeing in these images? So being a bioprocess engineer, I designed a series of experiments where we could grow organisms in carefully controlled cultures called chemostats. And in there, we could carefully control the availability of the electron donor and the elect electron acceptor and avoid the production of those little magnetite particles. And when we investigated those organisms then, on, by scanning electron micrograph, we found something just remarkable, that each of those organisms were connected to one another by small little filaments, branch filaments that you can see in this scanning electron micrograph. These filaments, again, were produced in response to electron acceptor limitation. These, these organisms were suffocating. So from that, we developed a hypothesis that the filaments that we're seeing there are involved in electron transfer for organisms to get rid of their excess electrons, and that these things might actually be electrically conductive. So we set out to interrogate the electrically conductive properties of these filaments, first of all, to determine if they were conductive at all. And a friend and colleague of mine at Pacific Northwest National Lab, Svetlana Janina, applied a technique called scanning tunneling microscopy 
to these filaments and clearly demonstrated for the first time that they were in fact conductive, at least across their diameter. It was a profound discovery and uh, then the next task that we had to deal with was uh, to answer the question, are these filaments conductive not only across their diameter but also along their length? So a colleague of mine at the U University of Southern California, Dr. Mo El Najjar, um, applied techniques that were well established for nano, for investigating basically the, the electronic properties of nanomaterials like carbon nanotubes. And in the scanning electromicrograph that you see here, you see one of these little gold contact arrays. Um, these little pads that you see on the surface of this uh, silicon chip are about 100 microns across. They're really small. Um, there, in this image also, you can see the platinum injection ports, which are coming down from the top of the image. Uh, these platinum injection ports can be used to deposit very fine um, filaments of platinum, so you can connect up any of your nanomaterials under investigation to these contact arrays. By, you, by going in and getting a little bit closer, so we're increasing the magnification now, you can start to see these little bacteria appearing. You can see little black spots all over the, the uh, image that you see here. And if we increase that just, that just a little bit further, you can now see that Mo has actually hooked up one of these single filaments into a circuit using that platinum injection system. Now with this little filament as part of that circuit, Mo could take this chip out of the scanning electron mic uh, microscope and use a device called a probe station to interrogate the electronic properties. And the graph that you see in this image demonstrates that these little conductive filaments are conductive along their length. When Mo um, first demonstrated that these were conductive along their length, uh, it basically changed our understanding how, of how these organisms work uh, in the real world. We continued uh, to investigate broadly across the whole spectrum of microbial life and this image is one of my favorite. This is a, uh, a scanning electron micrograph of an organism called Seneca cystis. It was thought to have been the organism that invented oxygenic photosynthesis on Earth about two and a half billion years ago. And what you see here is one of these little green organisms that knows how to use uh, the energy from the sun and transform that energy from photons uh, into a form that can extract electrons from water and then use those electrons to fix carbon dioxide. In this case, we put this organism into a device called a photovoltaic microbial fuel cell. And the organism that you see here is sitting on an anode surface. It's a little graphite filament and the small nanowires uh, that you see connecting the back, this cyanobacterium to that electrode surface are carrying electrons <clears throat> that this organism extracted from water using light as the energy source to do that and we're producing a little bit of electricity in these little devices. Just a fantastic, fantastic uh, process that we intend to investigate fully to see if we can actually use this type of information uh, for alternative energy devices. So we, all of the environmental organisms, yeah, we, we've covered the spectrum from photosynthetic oxygenic uh, cyanobacteria to the methanogenic co-cultures. But we wanted to know a little bit more about organisms, maybe those organisms involved in pathogenesis. Um, so in this image, the scanning electron micrograph, you see a mixed microbial community of uh, bacteria that are associated with a condition called uh, osteonecrosis of the jaw. And you can see the effect of this, uh, this disease or this condition uh, in the lower right-hand inset that you see in this image. Greg Wanger at the J. Craig Venter Institute, a colleague of mine, clearly demonstrated that the filaments that you see in this micrograph are electrically conductive and that they are possibly involved in the corrosion of tooth and bone uh, for people with this, uh, the unfortunate people with condition known as osteonecrosis of the jaw. The bottom line is we basically find these electrically conductive filaments, bacterial nanowires, in almost all the organisms that we studied to date. We believe that it is a common phenomenon, that it is a typical strategy of uh, microorganisms uh, for being able to move electrons or charge around in their outside of their, uh, their bodies, so from one organism to another, to electrode surfaces, to iron oxide uh, minerals. 
And we really don't know where this field of electromicrobiology is going to take us, but we are really excited about the journey. Bye-bye.